see you. Aha, uh -huh. you can see my screen. Can you? Yes. Okay, uh, so I'm Petra Linscheid. Uh, I just want to uh, introduce um, my researches. I studied archaeology, but uh, since 25 years, I'm working mainly on textiles. Um, and I started in the 1990, 1996 uh, to work on so-called uh, uh, Coptic textiles. You know, uh, these are the textiles from the late antique uh, to early Byzantine graveyards in, um, in Egypt, which are scattered in uh, European museum in museums in thousands and ten thousands. Uh, you probably know this material. Um, most of them came through the art market and uh, the problem is that they are cut in pieces, they are not complete, they don't have a finding spot, they don't have a context, so they are beautiful, they are colorful, but you don't have any archaeological context. Um, so I started uh, to work with this uh, um, collection in Berlin together with uh, Cecilia Fluck. Um, and we uh, published some catalogues on this material, uh, putting the focus uh, on the technical production and as well on the um, reconstruction of the objects, uh, uh, considering the, um, uh, the, the construction details we may still find, uh, seams and hems and things like this. Um, yeah. Um, I continued then, um, I, I found that among these uh, Coptic textiles, there uh, is a large group of, group of head coverings, which is not uh, identified as head, as head coverings. What you see here, um, so, so I um, decided to do my PhD on uh, early Byzantine textile head coverings. Um, most of them are spring hairnets. I'm, sh I'm sure you know about the technique and about the construction. Uh, so I collected all of uh, them virtually, of course, and I um, uh, tried to find out uh, the way uh, they are draped and the way they were worn and the um, the social uh, context, but uh, I tried to um, to approach this subject of head coverings not from uh, from the pictures, but from the existing objects. Um, so uh, spring hairnets were a part of my PhD, but not all. There is a a wide range of woven uh, head coverings as well. There are hoods, there are all kinds of uh, soon in shape caps. Um, but in fact, it was uh, spring was the major part. Um, I wanted to point to the textiles from the Nile Valley Study Group, uh, which is a group which formed in the 1990s T6 or something like this, uh, and which is holding a Biennale conference every second year in Antwerp. You can see at the bottom the, um, uh, the, the internet link um, for the conferences. And after each conference, we publish the proceedings. You see two uh, of the volumes uh, here. So I'm co organizer and co editor of these. Um, volumes together with uh, Cecilia Fluck uh, from Berlin um, and uh, Antoine de Moor, who is in uh, Antwerp. I continued to research and um, publish um, collections of uh, Coptic textiles, although I don't like this word. Um, um, mainly two large collections in uh, Badisches Landesmuseum Karlsruhe and römisch germanisches Zentralmuseum in Mainz. Uh, two catalogues published in 2016 and 2017. And I try to focus, um, as I did uh, before, on the construction details to, uh, to research, uh, to, to um, 
examine the the fragments and to see if there are traces of construction for example here on this uh, there is uh, the uh, um, uh, su suing traces of a clavus applied on it this fragment here uh, is part of a, a run and fell seam it this is an edge and it was folded two times so if you look on the objects like this you can do some reconstructions, even though these are just small fragments and they don't have any provenience, they don't have a dating, they don't have a context, but at least you can do something with them, which is more than just uh, seeing wonderful colors and wonderful pattern, of course. Um, and then at the bottom right here, uh, what else you can do with these uh, Coptic textiles is to, uh, to, to collect the various fragments which are scattered all over Europe and even America. And uh, you can check by the technical details if they, be, if they came from the same cloth or not. And if they, be, if they come from the same cloth, you can, do, you can try some kind of reconstruction of the original object. So you see, uh, um, this is part of a, a takete, weave which are scattered in all these museums, one in Warsaw also. This is part of a hem. There, there are two, uh, two fragments with a part of a neck slit. Uh, there are some, uh, par some remains of a clavus. So, um, and this is part of a side, uh, side seam. So this is real fun. I mean, it is like a, like a big puzzle you can do with these beautiful uh, objects. Um, what else I was doing since the 90s, I think, is uh, working in an excavation uh, in Amorium, which is um, uh, in Western Turkey, which is pretty near to uh, Eskishi here. So, uh, Dennis, uh, very nice to know you. Um, this was a um, British-American excavation, and they found uh, in uh, burials in the lower city church, they found a lot of uh, textiles in five uh, burials. Uh, the textiles date to the 9th to, 9th to 11th century AD. Um, and they are very good evidence for middle Byzantine textiles, which are silk indeed. Um, and um, which is a very rare uh, case that we uh, have uh, evidence of these uh, textiles. And uh, um, these excavations in the meantime um, uh, changed. Uh, uh, is, this excavation in the meantime is a, is a Turkish excavation and it is led by um, uh, Azudem, not, not Azudem, uh, Denis, I will send you the, the name of the Maybe you know, she's an uh, archaeologist uh, working in um, Eskishi here. It would be really useful to, to know her. I will send you um, the connection. Um, yes, and so since uh, 2010, I'm working at the University of Bonn, Institute of Archaeology, um, and in the Department of Christian Archaeology. I'm research assistant, and I'm not working exclusively on textiles, um, but also on other aspects of late antique archaeology I'm teaching. Um, but we have a strong research focus on archaeological textiles, um, together with uh, Sabine Schrenk, uh, we, who is the professor in this department. I think you know her, maybe you see here our website and the list of all the um, textile archaeological projects uh, which are running in our department. Um, so uh, these are not all my projects. I will just show you what the two projects uh, I'm um, involved in. One is uh, about the Roman and Merovingian local textile finds in the uh, Landesmuseum in Bonn. So you see here the map of Germany. So the Landesmuseum Bonn is collecting the local textiles in the western part of Germany and on the western side of the Rhine. So this is a, a political division. Um, 
and uh, there are not many but uh, in the meantime i'm i recorded uh, 170 roman textile finds and more than 500 merovingian textile finds which give a very which give a uh, picture of um, of the roman and merovingian textile production and use uh, which we didn't know so far so I, of course i'm all putting them in a database um, i'm uh, uh, working with several kinds of microscopes so i'm i'm uh, preparing reports for the uh, archaeological excavations of course to add a chapter on the textile finds um, but at the same time of course i'm collecting all these data to get a complete uh, picture um, and the second project i'm working on is uh, the textile archive of hans jürgen hund um, maybe you know his name he was a uh, uh, conservator and director in the Römisch Germanisches Zentralmuseum Mainz from 1970 to 1919. And in that time, he was one of the few scholars in Europe who, uh, who, who did textile archaeology, who did textile conservation, textile recording, textile analysis. So uh, during the 30 years uh, of his uh, practice, he recorded uh, more than 3,000 textiles. And uh, for each of his analyses, he, he made a, 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 he, he prepared a record and they made a, a photo and a drawing. Um, and all these records he put into his uh, archive. He sent the fragments back, but all the information is still in this archive and only half of all these textiles are published so far. So um, what I am doing is uh, rec taking this information into a database um, and sorting it and evaluating it and putting it into a larger picture of uh, European textiles. So um, the, the time frame covered by this archive, in fact, is uh, Neolithic until Middle Ages. Uh, so it's a uh, amount of data um, incredible. Yeah, so that's it. Thank you very much.